إنك لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the Young Smokes podcast. I have a very special guest, Sheikh Jamal Abdel Nasser. Assalamu alaykum, Sheikh. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. How are you? Good. Very well. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. Barakallah feek. Subhanallah. I've been trying to get you on for some time. <laughs> alhamdulillah. And uh, alhamdulillah. It's my pleasure. Alhamdulillah. It's amazing to finally meet you. Second time. Yeah, second alhamdulillah. time. Alhamdulillah. During the lockdown. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Sheikh, subhanallah, you're... you're um, MashaAllah, you have memorized the Qur'an and you, MashaAllah, are very active in preserving the Qur'an, not just in one format, but you're also known for your memorization in many different uh, recitations. Mm -hmm. And many Muslims, they, they're not actually aware that the Qur'an has different recitations, different ways to recite it. Mm. You know, alhamdulillah, many, many Muslims, they listen to the Qur'an, they recite the Qur'an, but we're more familiar with certain uh, recitations, mm -hmm. but as we know, there are many, as I'd like to ask you as well, there's many, many different types of recitations. So I want to kind of speak to you about this uh, in the podcast at some point. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I want to ask you, tell us a bit about yourself, because you're, you were, you're actually from London, yes, and you were... Uh, you, mashallah, started your journey memorizing the Quran in the UK. Alhamdulillah, yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa baraka wa sallam, and tasleeman kathiran wa ba'du. Jazakallah khairan once again for giving me the opportunity and inviting me on to this amazing, beneficial and blessed podcast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless it and allow it to reach far and wide. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make many of the Muslims and non-Muslims alike benefit from it. May Allah Jalla accept it from you as well. Um, as for myself, then I think the most difficult thing a person can do when they're speaking is speak about themselves. Yeah. Uh, at least that's how it should be. Some people yeah. maybe they find it easy, <laughs> but uh, it should be the case. Yeah. And Shaykh, the only reason I'm asking... No, Shaykh, Jamal. Jamal. Uh, oh, Jamal, Jamal. Jamal. <laughs> the only reason I'm asking is because, of course, I, I don't know you personally, exactly. we've only met a couple of times, so it's, it's more for myself as well. Yes. And we need to remind ourselves, it's not because we're boasting or That's bragging correct. about who we are, what that we do. Correct. But it's more kind of to introduce uh, my audience to yourself Inshallah. and other beneficial uh, yeah. speakers. Yeah. So, um, uh, my name is Jamal uh, Abdel Nasser, born and raised uh, in London, UK. And Warillah Alhamd, I completed the memorization of the Quran in this city, in London. Um, and this is from the grace and the virtue of Allah Azza wa Jal, that He shows His servants, His slaves, the manifestation of the Quran. And wherever you may be in the world, you are able to learn it. You are able to become a recipient of it. Whatever color, whatever background, whatever uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has given you or hasn't given you, you are all equal in terms of this book because it belongs to you all. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, I completed the memorization of the Qur'an at about the age of 13 Mashallah. and began at perhaps the age of 6 or 7 Mashallah. approximately, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah You know, it's hard for people to believe sometimes yeah. even me, like when yeah, yeah, yeah. I, of course we have many people who memorize the Qur'an That's correct um, yeah. but a lot of the time, you know you just wonder how can people memorize the Quran in, in such a difficult society like England, mm -hmm. especially London. Yeah. I'm from Manchester and it's it's hard to believe in Manchester, but yeah. living in such a busy city, yeah. how how did how is this possible? The Quran, what we must understand is that Allah Azza wa has made it easy from the get go. With the revelation of the Quran, part of its revelation was we made the Quran easy. So it came down with that verse to tell all of mankind that here's the Quran, it's come down. One of the verses that has just come down on Paul Muhammad Sallallahu is the Quran has been made easy for absolutely everybody. So you find SubhanAllah those who uh, find sometimes challenging to memorize the Quran, they come across that verse. Imagine you now memorizing the Quran and you come across this ayah and you're finding it difficult. And then you read Allah has said the Quran has been made easy for you all. So who is going to? Uh, make an effort with the Quran. So when you see that, that gives you the motivation mm. and that gives you the zeal to learn it. At least that's what it's done for me. <laughs> Subhanallah. I think, I think that's the biggest motivation yeah. for someone to memorize the Quran. Allah telling you that He made it easy. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah. I mean, it, 
And I'm sure, I do believe that Allah made it easy, but I'm sure that, you know, you also put a lot of time and effort, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, subhanAllah, yeah. many, many years of, of studying and, yeah, yeah. you know, it must have been, I'm not going to say it's difficult, but, you yeah, know, you yeah. put a lot of time and effort yeah, into that as definitely, well. definitely, definitely. Yeah. Without putting time and effort, you won't reach your goal. Yeah. Because the only man who can receive the Qur'an without putting time and effort is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the only one that received revelation and it went into his heart because it descended upon him. But as for the rest of us, yeah. we have to put in work. We have to put in the time. So Alhamdulillah, definitely, it requires a lot of time. So Sheikh, just before we begin, just to give people an understanding, because not just for non-Muslims, but also yeah. for Muslims who are kind of maybe new to the religion or newly practicing. What's the difference between the Qur'an and a Hadith? You know, because we, both of them are revelation, like a, a wahi. But can you kind of give us an explanation of the difference between the Qur'an and uh, something that is a type of revelation from the Prophet himself Sallallahu uh, the difference between the Qur'an and the Hadith can be summarized into one sentence which is both are divine pieces of revelation one is a godly one and it is a speech of Allah this is the Qur'an and one is a prophetic statement and a prophetic tradition and this is attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu both have ultimately come from Allah because Allah has sent out the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but one has come out and originated from Allah and one has come out from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam SubhanAllah yeah, yeah. So from, from the perspective of like a hadith it's still revelation Correct um, But of course the Quran is, Correct. is like a direct, direct Correct. speech Correct Yeah, so the Quran is Allah's speech Allah sent it down and He spoke it yeah. As for the hadith, then this is revelation so Allah also sent it down but he inspired the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is one of the meanings of wahi and revelation mm. to inspire yeah. so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he inspired the Prophet mm. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he taught him mm. because as we know our Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him he couldn't read nor could he write mm. so it is his Lord who taught him yeah. Allah mm. mentions this in the Quran in many places mm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ar-Rahman allama al-Quran it is the most merciful who taught everybody the Quran SubhanAllah no, no. You know this is, a, this is an important point when I first became a Muslim, um, of course I was confused sure. because I didn't know much about Islam. Sure. I believed in the Quran because yes. of course this is different to what I've known before. Yes, yes. You know, it's something that was the direct speech of Allah. SubhanAllah. But then when it came to the Hadith, yes. I had some doubts about the Hadith because yes. I was thinking, originally I was thinking, oh, but this is what, the, what was said and uh, you know, by the Prophet peace be upon him and it was recorded by his companions. So in this day and age, sometimes you get some Muslims and, and non-Muslims who have doubts about the Hadith. You know, they think, uh, even some Muslims, maybe they accept the Qur'an, but they try to uh, not accept the Hadith. So, what do you think about this? The Qur'an and the Hadith, the tradition of the Prophet Wasallam, is described in the Qur'an to be guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Qur'an that whomsoever follows my guidance will never be cast astray and will never be unfortunate in this life or the next. So both are pieces of guidance. Mm. And in the Quran, Allah further elaborates this by telling us to follow Muhammad's tradition. Mm. So a person should not be in a state of doubt. Mm. Because even if you are to be in a state of doubt and you believe in the Quran, but you have some doubts in the Ahadith, mm. then in the Quran itself, you are mm. being told and instructed to follow Muhammad Sallallahu In other ayat, it says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And in Muhammad, this man, the Messenger of Allah, is the best of examples for the one who believes in Allah. And you believe in Allah, O Muslim, O, o individual who believes in the Qur'an but may have doubts in the statements of the Prophet If you wish to meet Allah, then in this man is your role model, the person you follow. He is the person that you take as an example. So this is all in the Qur'an, it's filled, it's filled, pages and pages, ajza after ajza, surah after surah. <laughs> the person has to search. And subhanAllah with the Qur'an and with the ahadith, if you're in search for guidance, you will find it. So this, is, this is a beautiful way to put it because sometimes the people are still stuck and they're still in doubt, even when you explain it to them. But we remind them and we say, if you are a person who is in search for answers, you will be guided to the truth with the permission of Allah. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. I think, you know, I remember, SubhanAllah, you know, different ayah kind of, people relate to different ayah. Sorry. If you know what I mean, you'll, you'll read one ayah and Sorry. that will mean something That's true. very yeah, special yeah. to yeah, you. Yeah. I'll read another ayah and, Definitely. you know, 
And I remember, I remember one time there was this, uh, I'll call her a sister. At the time she was a non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. I was giving, uh, giving this lady dawah. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, do you believe in God? Mm -hmm. And I, no, I said, do you believe in one God? And she said, there has to be one God. Otherwise they would be fighting. SubhanAllah. And SubhanAllah, I showed her the ayah, yeah, yeah. So you know. Yeah, yeah. And she started crying. Yeah, Allah. Now for me, I'll be honest, that particular ayah is not something that, Yes. It doesn't work for me, if yes. you understand. Yes. Of course, an ayah from Allah. Yes. But as I mentioned to you just before the podcast is, there was other ayah that yes. really stood out to yes. me. Correct. You know? yes. So subhanAllah, sometimes Allah. every ayah has a yes. place for somebody. SubhanAllah. Most definitely. Most you definitely. Know? And that's why it's a timeless work. It's for every time. Mm. It's for every era. Every place and every person. And that ayah is ajeeb. Like, imagine now if this sister, and maybe she has since you last saw her, um, she has studied more. Now, as soon as you said they would fight, mm. I knew the ayah you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. imagine your iman reaches a stage where when you hear somebody talk about something, mm -hmm. already you know that Allah said this Subhan more than 14 centuries ago. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Subhan 14,000. SubhanAllah, yeah. Sheikh. Sheikh, you know, um, yeah. I want to speak a little bit about um, how the Quran came to the Prophet. So, how, what was, how was the, 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 the initial? interaction with the Prophet and how it was uh, sent down and given to him. The Prophet وسلم, first received the Quran at the age of 40. And prior to this, he would visit a cave in Mecca known as Ghari Hira, Hira, the cave of Hira, and he would go there to worship Allah Azza So one day he went to the cave and the angel Jibreel came down in, in his angelic form. And the Prophet ﷺ, he speaks about him later on in a hadith and he says, On the night that I was taken on the night journey and I ascended to the skies, I saw Jibreel in his angelic form. This angel, he has 600 wings. If he was to unfold only one of them, it would cover the east to the west. Oh. He saw him. So he came to him and he shook him. Hmm. And who wouldn't get scared? The Prophet says yeah. in the Quran, I am a human being like you. So mm. as a human, he became scared. And he told him, Iqra, read. Mm. And he said, Ma ana I am not a reader. I cannot yeah. recite. He shook him again a second time, a third time. And on the third instance, the first five verses of the Quran, this is how it started, came down in Juz Amma, the 30th chapter, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, iqra' bismi rabbika al-lazhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram, al-lazhi allama bil-qalam, and here is when revelation began. SubhanAllah. Um, so this was the first portion of, the, first portion. of, the, of the Quran. Revealed. And it's revealed in that cave. SubhanAllah. Yes. Have you been to that cave? Not inside, no. <laughs> <laughs> I stood around, I swear. Yeah. Did you not climb up? No, <laughs> no. It's, locked. it's not safe for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, SubhanAllah, it's, it's an amazing uh, thing to think that, you know, because even before I was a Muslim, this concept of the revelation being direct from Allah. from the Creator Allah. made Allah. sense to me. You know, when when I was reading uh, the, the books of the Christians today, you know, which are authored by people, Allah. you know, I was like, where's the one that the Islam Allah. had? Where's the one that Musa had? And then when I realized that Muslims actually believe that the Quran is that direct from Allah, I was like, this is the one. Yeah. This is the religion. Yeah. Yeah. This is the only uncreated thing that we have. Yeah. You touch it and you understand and you feel it that this is perfect. Mm. It has no flaws. Mm. Everything else around us is created, including ourselves. Mm. Allah says in the Quran, and we have created you and your actions. Wallahu khalaqakum and Allah created you. Wama ta'amaloon and everything that you do. Mm. And in aqeedah we understand and creed in faith, we understand the opposite for Allah, that He is uncreated and so are His actions. Mm. Our actions and ourselves are created. Mm. Meaning, from Allah's characteristics and attributes is that He speaks. We have the speech here with us. Mm. Allah sent it down from the skies, so it is perfect. It's the only mm. attribute that we have amongst us of Allah. Mm. Mm. In this world, you will never see Him. And the closest you can be to Him is in prostration. But you do have an attribute of His that is with you, mm. that you listen to, that you look to, you look at, and you read, and you hear, you learn, you study. And this is the Quran. Yeah. So, Sheikh, I want to. Pick your brains about the uh, the kiraat, the different ways to recite the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to go into too much detail, mm -hmm. but I want to give enough details so that the average person, you know, the Muslim, gets a, a, a gist of 
of the different recitations so that it's enough to basically remove any kind of doubts that they may have uh, regarding the Qira'at. So like we mentioned earlier, Allah Azza has sent down upon us a great book. It is the Qur'an, the greatest book, like he describes it in the Qur'an. And Allah Azza has sent it down for every single nation, every single people who are from the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Whatever background, whatever country, whatever color, whatever language, he has sent it down to all of them. Now these people, they are from vast backgrounds and they speak in different ways. So from Allah's infinite wisdom and knowledge, he sent down the Qur'an in a number of styles of reading. The same one Qur'an. Mm. So it is one Qur'an, but he accommodates and facilitates mm. for absolutely everyone. Yeah. And this goes back to the ayah we mentioned that Allah said we have made the Qur'an divinely easy, like it was mentioned mm. earlier. He's made it easy in this sense too, that every single person can relate. So you would find from the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were those who could speak Arabic in a specific way, in a specific way alone. And some of our teachers, they mentioned that in our times, the Arabs, how they are very different in their dialects and their accents. And this is persons from Morocco, this person from Egypt, this person from Saudi Arabia. They all speak differently. Mm. It's one language though. Mm. And this was at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the same case. Mm. So the Sahaba, they were different because they were from different regions, mm. different lands, different areas. And so the Qur'an would come down, the Prophet ﷺ would teach this companion in a specific way and that companion in a different way. Mm. They would later on learn from each other and hear from each other and benefit from each other. Mm. And this is something that we have until today. This is mm. like in brief. Yeah. yeah. So t today, how many of these different recitations exist today? Uh, the same amount that existed at that time. Mm. So we clear off any doubts as well. Okay. Yeah, they don't go up and down. Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, so, I want to add, so all the Qur'an is Correct. preserved and Correct. all the of course. Uh, Qira'at. Of course, the Qur'an is preserved and the Qira'at are preserved and the stars of the Qur'an are preserved. And something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken upon himself to preserve, nobody could ever tamper with and nobody can ever change. Imagine Allah is saying the previous scriptures that have come down, mm. we have made them those who preserve it. And they didn't do so and they destroyed it and they tampered with it and they changed it. But we have sent down the Qur'an and it is us who is going to preserve it. The Qur'an is preserved and it will remain preserved until the end of times. And no matter whatever happens, it will never be unchanged. It will be changed. Sheikh, um, I know this is a big question, but do you have any particular ayah which is your favorite? Or anything like... I have a genre of ayat okay. that I like, not a specific ayah. Uh, at times when I'm reciting the Qur'an, um, like anybody else would, uh, I do connect to the specific ayah at times. Mm. But to say uh, I have my all-time favorite, um, there isn't one. But if, it, if I were to say one, it would be Ayatul Kursi. Sure. Simply because this is the greatest ayah in the Qur'an yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. But the genre of ayat that I like are the ayat that speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. His azamah and his greatness and who he is and when he talks about himself. Mm. Just like we were speaking about earlier, the first thing you asked me in the, on this podcast was to speak about myself. Mm. And I said to you that uh, this is probably the hardest thing one can do. Mm. And even if one has pure intentions and one is sincere, yeah. you may come across and it may be interpreted that you are not sincere. Yes, yes, yes. Because you're talking about yourself. Mm. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it because he, he, it's befitting for him to do that. And I am Allah and I am the one who created this and I am the one who does this and I am the one who provides this and I don't need any of you Allah who can say this. A human being cannot say this. Mm. And if they do say this, nobody will take them seriously. Mm. Yeah. And Literally. this explanation of Allah uh, describing himself is to our benefit. It's, it's, for us. it's for us so we can know about him. The most important benefit. Yes, yes, so. yes. Shaykh, yeah. I wanted to ask if you could possibly share some recitation. No. As well as some uh, explanation of no. some some ayah or some uh, verses that you mm. think will be a good reminder no. for for the viewers. So before I do that, I want to ask you your favorite verse because you asked me. My favorite verse again, it's difficult, and okay. it depends like what you're doing, what you're reading, etc. Um, at the moment. At the moment, I mean, of course, you've got to say it or curse you, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But not just because of, of um, the, the fact that it is the greatest, the ayah. greatest ayah, but you know, just just the the way uh, yeah. Allah describes Himself, etc., yes. and also the benefits of it. Yes. You know, the protection yes. you recite it as a protection. Yes. I just recently did a podcast with uh, Musa Adnan, yes. who was speaking about rukya and uh, the yes. jinn and things like this, yes. and sure. and. Um, yeah, I think I think Ayatul Kursi, of course, the, the 
from the protection perspective, yeah. you know, obviously Allah protects you by reciting these yeah. ayah and the and benefits. And it's a beautiful verse, Ayatul yeah. Kursi, subhanAllah. Some people may not know, um, especially if they haven't looked at the meanings of it. The whole ayah from beginning to end only speaks about Allah, as we mm. know. And it's attributed to Allah's chair, the, the throne of Allah, mm. Azzawajal. Ayatul Kursi. Mm. There's no stories in there, there's no rulings in there, there's nothing except Allah, from it's beginning to end. And that's why perhaps we yearn towards these type of verses yeah. because we yearn towards our Creator. Maybe yeah. we can we can uh, <laughs> hear it. <laughs> yeah, hear it, okay. and also maybe you can give us some benefits and uh, tafsir explanation of it. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شيء وسع كرسي السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم شاية الكرسي As a disclaimer, I looked towards the camera as well uh, This was رواية خلفا حمزة So there's no mistakes just yeah. You know uh, خلفا حمزة is actually my favorite uh, recitation um, yeah, subhanAllah. <laughs> You're very close to Sheikh Ukasha. Yeah, you? Ukasha Kama, yeah, yeah, mashallah. He came in for the first time, I've seen you the other day. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, was it? Yeah, because you toured with time. him, right? You did, yeah, you did, yeah. You did, you did I, did a, I did a fully tour with him, but when he landed, we went to go visit him and we helped with his tour. I was contacted. Uh, I didn't really accompany him on every trip, but uh, he enjoyed his stay, mashallah. And he's a lovely individual. And anybody who's attributed to the Quran would be a lo lovely person to be. Yeah, anyway. I mean, uh, he was Sheikh, amazing, mashallah. Uh, Sheikh Ukasha. He he probably had such a most biggest effect on me Allah. more than any other sheikh I've ever met. Um, and you've met many shuyukh. Yeah. What do you think is he, behind he, that? He, again, the Quran. The Quran, فقط. But not only that, it's, he he understands life, and uh, you know you see many people, mashallah, they've been raised very well and things like that. He's got a lot of experience in life, and he's still very young. Mm -hmm. The secret behind that is, and I'm even younger than him, but the secret behind that is mm. the Quran, it gives to the individual that which not, the world cannot teach him. Mm. The entire world cannot teach you what the Quran can teach you. Mm. So that by itself, that statement should be written with the ink of gold. Mm. Whatever this world has to offer, from technology and from secular studies and from academic studies and from whatever that it has to offer, the Quran will give you far beyond that. Mm. That it made someone like the Sheikh, like you mentioned, who's not too old, seem like he's a very mature person, yeah. mature, more mature than he is, yeah. and he, uh, the age he is. Yeah. It is the Quran that did that. Because the Prophet let me mention that the Quran raises people. Mm. Um, yeah, subhanAllah. And, he, you know, very dedicated uh, Sheikh. Uh, yeah. And, you know, he, uh, he's done a lot of, again, Similar to you, you know, he's, he specializes in various different recitations. But um, would you be able to see some people have never heard that before, Sheikh? Yeah. And what's this? He just pronounced this ayah wrong or yeah. stuff Allah. So <laughs> explain what? Why did you recite some parts? They sound different to what people are used to hearing. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He revealed the Quran in these different styles, yeah. and. This is authentically transmitted back to Allah, mm. not back to Muhammad, not back to an Arab, a person in the desert somewhere, mm. back to Allah himself. Mm. So Allah spoke it like this and he passed it on to the angel Jibreel who brought it down to Muhammad mm. who read it, who passed it on until it reached us, mm. until it reached you mm. and now you heard it. Mm. So this is the ayah as it is. Mm. But it accommodates for different, different accents mm. like I mentioned. Mm. So for example, when you said, Bima Shay, Mm. Sha she. This has slightly been changed in terms of the sound, mm. not the meaning. Mm. The word is the same. Mm. Even when I took pauses, wal arda, mm. wal arda it means the earth. Wal arda also means the earth. Mm. It is the same. 
yeah. it is two people talking at the same time, for example, in the English language, yeah. and one speaks a specific way. Yeah. One has a Cockney accent, yeah. and one has an up north accent, yeah. and one, one sounds like a foreign person from abroad. They are breaking up the. Yes. It's, it's like that. This is all. Oh. Yes. Sheikh, would you be able to give us some explanation of Ayatul Kursi, just yeah. for the viewers so they can benefit from this beautiful ayah? Yeah. So, Ayatul Kursi. It revolves around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lofty and majestic attributes. Allahu la ilaha illahu and Allah is the only deity, the only God, there is none other but Him. Al Hayyul Qayyum, He is the ever living and He is the one who sustains for His creation. La ta'akhuduhu sinatun wala no. No state of fatigue and tiredness befalls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is far above that. And everything in the skies and the earth belongs to him. And who is the one who is able to intercede for others except with his permission? Meaning nobody. It's a question. Mm -hmm. Allah has knowledge over absolutely everything that they have, everything that they do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that, And they are not able to encompass knowledge in any amount. In any amount whatsoever, illa mm -hmm. bi except if he wills. Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard, and as for his throne, his kursi, then it has become so expansive and great, then it is. Some of the scholars they say this is the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa taala in terms of size. As samawati wal ard, it is bigger than all of this. Wala yauduhu hifthuhuma wa huwa aladiyul aladiyum. So this is the title. Yeah. Sheikh, is there any other small reminder you'd like to give us before we... I advise myself and everybody listening to uh, myself um, to attain at taqwa which is piety and good consciousness and to ensure that every single day you are in this world you are drawing nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remember that there is no greater thing for you O Muslim and O non-Muslim as well who may be searching for the truth than getting to know your maker and your creator and once you have this, you will feel like a king. And some of the people of the past from our Islamic traditions used to say that if only they knew what we had in terms of Iman, if only the people who don't have Iman and faith knew what we have in terms of Iman and faith, they would have fought us with their swords. Meaning they would have tried their hardest to take it away from us. Once you discover this and you see how great it is, you realize that this world and everything it contains is like how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said it's not even more greater than the wing of the mosquito so let us inshallah ta'ala draw nearer to the one who has made all of this who has made us he has made us without us asking him he has made us without us requesting from him he has made us without us having a right to be made to be created he made us Muslims he made us human beings he has given and given and given and given and he only asks for five um, rituals five pillars five main acts of worship, which is the testimony of faith to declare it, which is to establish the prayer, which is to give in charity if you can, which is to fast if you are not traveling, if you are not sick, which is to go hajj once in your lifetime only if you can. And how many concessions have been given? And if you do all of that, Jannah will belong to you and paradise is yours. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Araita in Salaytu al Maktubat, wa Sumtu Ramadan, wa Ahlaltu al Halal, wa Haramtu al Haram, a Atkuru al Jannah, Fakala Naham. O oh, Messenger of Allah, if I come with the five prayers every day, and I fast the month of Ramadan, and I come with everything that is permissible and lawful, which is halal, I abstain from everything which is unlawful and impermissible, is that enough to enter Jannah? He said, Naam, that's it. Because Islam is built upon five pillars. Buni al Islam, wa ala khamsi, the Prophet mentions. You know, Sheikh, you know, for newly practicing Muslims, like maybe they've been born into a Muslim family, but they've just started practicing. In some cultures, I found that they they make it a bit difficult, Sheikh. That's so correct. you know they try they try to implement all the Sunnah Salah as well. So I try to advise like newly practicing Muslims just focus on the five yeah. Salah. Yeah. Is this enough, Sheikh? Yes, focus on the five Salah yeah. and then build on that mm. slowly, slowly. The people of the past they would say ibda bi khutwa. Start mm. with a step. Mm. Don't start with sprinting. Start with a step. So once you perfected your five daily prayers, then begin with. The Sunan al rawatiba that come before mm. and after the five obligatory prayers that mm. are Sunnah. Mm. And the Prophet ﷺ said there are 12 in the, in the day two before Fajr, four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib, two after Isha. Whomsoever preserves these 12, a house will be built for them in Jannah. Mm. Do that. Then come with Witr, then come with Salatul Layl, come with Salatul Duha, and so on. 
slowly, but you can't do all of them one time. Mm. Now, this is what I would advise you. Sheikh, what, I, I want to ask you a bit more about what was the process of you actually uh, learning the Qur'an? You said from the age of seven. Sure. What was like your daily routine? You know, so people who are having children uh, yes. in this day and age, they kind of need to know how to work it around sure. their daily lives, especially in a Western society. Um, I would say it's not so much about uh, the routine. It's more about creating for the children a love and a, an affinity towards the Qur'an, the speech mm -hmm. of Allah because creating the environment alone will not be enough. But once you make them love the Qur'an and fall in love with the Book of Allah and likewise anything in the religion of Islam. For example, we have a little girl, we have our daughter, we have our sisters, our nieces, and we want to make them wear the hijab and train them to do that. For us to just create the environment, and for example, create the environment may mean in this case that we say that this is obligatory. You have to cover up and be modest. This by itself may not be enough. But when you tell her that you are a beautiful Muslim lady, a servant of Allah, and Allah loves you dearly, and Allah wishes for you to conceal all of this so you can reveal it later in paradise, when you speak to them like this, they will, inshallah ta'ala, uh, incline towards that. And similarly with the Qur'an. So you ask me, my parents, and my parents did the, the most amazing job for me. They sent me to an Islamic school, and I would go there in the day, then go to Madrasa in the evening. So I'm learning Qur'an pretty much throughout the day. But for myself, the people who had the greatest impact upon me have, has always been my teachers and my parents themselves they say this because one may say you can't make your parents second best but i wasn't doing that until i heard them say that my own parents say that it was his teachers who has done on this no, they they were those who uh, had a very close relationship with the quran and they still do and they inspired this so like, um, you've also uh, started you, you're a teacher yourself now yeah. So now you're teaching, I've noticed, mashallah, you're teaching a lot of the younger generation, a lot of the you know, people in their late teens, early 20s, and I've seen some of your students, mashallah, <laughs> I've actually seen them develop. Subhanallah. And mashallah, you know, how is it kind of teaching in the UK to such a young audience, especially in these, you know, it's an... It's yes, a, correct. Uh, well, alhamdulillah, for me, um, it's something that, that I love. My life revolves around it. And I find it really, really easy because I learned here. And I'm still learning here. And I am from here. Mm -hmm. So all these people, we understand each other. We relate. Mm -hmm. um, when a person comes from abroad, from the East, and he's teaching in the West, maybe they won't find it as easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I understand it. And I, I, I don't see it to be a challenge. I don't see it to be anything that is difficult. Alhamdulillah. It's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Sheikh Jazakallah, it's been so a much. pleasure finally it's to sit pleasure. with you and meet you and uh, Barakallah. hopefully Barakallah. we can stay in touch. And, uh, Definitely. Sheikh, I want you to come to Uganda and Kenya. I, Have you I been to Uganda? I want to Kenya? come. My, my teacher, he went there just before the lockdown in January. Was there. Yes. He was there in Uganda and Kenya and he was doing a tour there. But I have been to Rashid. Sheikh Abdul Rashid. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah, mashallah, you came. met him before? No. No, you, no. You, you've flown so many places. I, I didn't meet him. I didn't meet him. I, I, I literally just left uh, Uganda when he went. just when he went, yeah. He, just January this year. Yeah, he, I wasn't there. Yeah. I was with uh, I was in New Zealand <laughs> with Musa, yeah. But subhanAllah, yeah, he came to um, Uganda, Kenya. Yes, yes. I think he's based in Qatar. Right. Qatar, yeah, you've yeah. been to Qatar? Yeah, yeah. You've been? Yeah, I'm How many times? Oh, many times. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> he's in Qatar, he's been living there for nearly 30 years. SubhanAllah. Yeah, yeah, so a long, long time. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, SubhanAllah. So, SubhanAllah. yeah, mashallah, it must be uh, amazing to have that kind of yeah, yeah. relationship with definitely, the Shaykh. Definitely, and, definitely. and of course, he's famous for his kira'at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. Yeah. Um, He's on a, uh, a very, very high level, mashallah, when it comes to the Qur'an. Just like similarly said to Shaykh al -Kasha. And all of these people are like that. Any person who has brought themselves closer to the Qur'an, Allah brings them closer to him. So this is, and thus Allah brings everyone closer to that person. It, this is how it works. This person has become close to the Qur'an, and as a result, they have become closer to Allah. And as a further result, people want to become closer to them. Yeah, it's because of the Quran. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Barakallah fi wa'iyakum. I'm forward to seeing you again, Shaykh. Me too, Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. Alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Innaka la tahdi man ahbabata walakin Allah yahdi man yashak.